A while back, I did a video on ISO and the Exposure Index, or EI, and it generated lots of comments, questions, and some great conversation. But it also created quite a bit of confusion, especially around my comment that EI is essentially the new ISO. In this video, I'll break down what EI is, how it actually works, and how it affects your image, and why, for me, EI has essentially become the new ISO. Let's dive right in. Now, before we dive into this video, I wanted to let you know that I'm filming on the Sony FX6 in Cine EI mode using S-Log3. While EI functions similarly across many different cameras, I'll be speaking specifically from my experience with the Sony FX6 and the FX3, and occasionally the FX9. The reality is EI is the same regardless of the manufacturer. When we talk about exposure index, or EI, it's important to first distinguish it from ISO. And when we talk about ISO, well, many people refer to it as the sensitivity of the sensor. While that's not technically accurate, it's an understandable analogy. Back in the days of film, ISO literally represented the sensitivity of the film stock to light. You would buy a 100 ISO stock or a 200 ISO or even higher depending on the shooting condition that you would be working in. In the digital era though, ISO works quite differently. Instead of changing the sensor sensitivity, which is set at the manufacturing process, ISO in digital camera controls the amplification of the electrical signal that the sensor generates when exposed to light. The camera sensor's job is to convert light into electrical signal, which is then processed to produce the final image. When we adjust the ISO setting, we're changing the amplification or gain of that signal. Increasing ISO makes the image appear brighter, but like any form of gain, it also reduces signal quality and introduces noise into the image. The higher the ISO, the more gain, the more noisy the picture gets. Native ISO is essentially the ISO setting at which the camera sensor operates with zero gain applied or minimal amplification. This means that at native ISO, the sensor is capturing the optimal dynamic range and the cleanest image quality with minimal noise. The FX6, like many modern cameras, features dual native ISO. It has a low base ISO of 800 and a high base of 12,800. When the camera is set to either of these values, minimal gain is applied, helping to keep your image as clean and noise-free as possible. So what about exposure index, or EI? What exactly is it, and how is it different from ISO? Well, the way most of us were taught is that EI doesn't actually affect the recorded image. Instead, it simply changes how the image appears on your monitor or your viewfinder. Think of ISO and EI like a water system with two valves. One valve controls the main water supply to your house, similar to how ISO controls the amplification of the signal that gets recorded, the other valve controls water going to your sprinkler system, much like how EI adjusts the signal that is sent to your monitor. Adjusting the EI changes how the image looks on the monitor without affecting what's actually being recorded, just like adjusting the sprinkler valve changes the water flow to the sprinkler without changing the main supply to the house. So why would you need and how would you use EI? Well, one application is when filming a darker scene, you can raise the EI to brighten the image on your monitor, making it easier for you to see the action without actually affecting the exposure of the recorded footage. Another practical and probably the most useful application of EI is helping us achieve the desired exposure level. So for example, some filmmakers prefer to slightly overexpose their image. If you lower the EI, the index, away from native, so in our example, native is 800. If I take the EI down to 400, essentially one stop reduction, the image on the monitor will appear one stop darker. In response, exposure settings often needs to be adjusted, opening the aperture, slowing the shutter speed, or adding more light to make the image appear correctly exposed on the monitor. So let's take a look at a real example. Sony recommends exposing middle gray at 41% IRE when using S-Log3. If you're not familiar with middle gray, also known as 18% gray, it's the industry standard used by all manufacturers as the reference points for proper exposure. Different log formats placed middle gray at different IRE value. So for instance, Sony's S-Log3 
places it at 41 IRE, while Canon C-Log3 places it at 34% IRE. Understanding these targets is crucial to avoid overexposing or underexposing your image. If you're unfamiliar with IRE or how to read a waveform monitor, check out my video on learning how to read your scopes. Exposing decisions should be based on measurable tools, not the naked eye. Now, back to the example. With the camera set to native ISO of 800 and the EI also set to 800, the exposure level on the monitor matches the level from the recorded file. But now let's drop the EI to 400 while keeping our ISO at 800. The gray card now appears underexposed on the monitor. To correct this, we need to adjust the exposure, and I'm just going to simply open the aperture one stop to bring the monitor reading back to 41 IRE. However, once the footage is brought into post, we can see that the gray card was actually recorded at around 50 IRE, one stop overexposed. By lowering the EI, we were visually prompted to let in more light, resulting in overexposing. Now, the same logics apply in reverse. If the EI is raised above native, the monitor image will look too bright, which will force us to then reduce the amount of light or stopping down, causing the image to be recorded at a slightly underexposed level. When talking about exposure index, we also need to understand its relationship to the dynamic range. Every camera has a range of tones or shades it can see, from deep shadows to bright highlights. Dynamic range refer to how many stops of light a camera can capture between pure black and pure white. Once you go beyond that range, on either end, the camera stops recording details. So anything darker than the lowest stops becomes solid black. And anything brighter than the higher stops becomes pure white. There is no texture, no detail, just clipped highlights and crushed shadows. High-end cinema cameras today typically capture around 15 to 17 stops. Dynamic range is measured relative to middle gray, the same 18% gray car we just used earlier. The dynamic range chart from Sony shows that at the native ISO of 800, the camera captures six stops above middle gray and nine stops below. The chart also indicates that by lowering the EI to 400, the dynamic range gains one stop in the shadows and loses one stop in the highlights. We now understand that this shift isn't something that the camera is doing internally. It's the result of us overexposing the image by one stop due to the lower EI setting. In other words, areas that were previously rendered as pure black now fall within the camera's usable dynamic range, revealing textures, contrast, and detail. This perceived shift in dynamic range is not a function of the sensors changing. It's simply the result of capturing more light and pulling the shadow's information into the visible range. The downside, however, is that by overexposing the image, the risk of clipping the highlights increase. With the EI lower to 200, only four stops remain above middle gray before highlights are blown out and rendered as pure white. So far, nothing new or revolutionary. Darker scene, more lights, better image. What fascinates me though, and where things start to get really interesting, is when we look at the actual signal coming from the sensor. Now by recording with the lens cap on and viewing the result on the waveform monitor, since no light is entering the lens, the waveform shows us only the camera's baseline signal. This reveals two things. First, where pure black falls on the IRE scale and second, the quality of the signal at that level. In S-Log3, the signal for pure black typically falls between 8 and 11 IRE. Anything below that range is clipped to pure black. No details, no texture, nothing. At the native ISO of 800, the signal appears with a certain thickness on the waveform, which I interpret as the representation of the signal strength and noise level, essentially the quality of the amplification. This native ISO setting is considered the optimal balance between noise performance and dynamic range. But when we lower the EI first to 400, then to 200, the waveform signal become noticeably thinner and cleaner. It's sharper and more refined. This tells me that there's something happening inside that camera beyond just adjusting the monitor brightness. The internal processing changes at lower EI setting, the camera is improving the quality of the signal, especially in the shadows. 
you're not just brightening up the image, you're actually recording cleaner, higher quality data. This is what makes EI such a powerful tool, especially in low light scenes. By lowering the EI, we're not only lifting the shadows, we're enhancing the overall signal quality in those darker areas. So now that we understand all of this, why do I claim that EI is the new ISO? After all, when adjusting the EI level, it doesn't change the recorded files, or does it? About a year ago, I was doing some exposure tests, filming different scenes and adjusting my EI settings just to see how it affected the look and the quality of the images. But when I brought that footage into DaVinci Resolve, something unexpected happened. The brightness of my footage actually changed based on the EI setting I had used during the shoot. This completely threw me off. And at the time, I fully understood that EI should not affect the recorded image, right? So why was Resolve interpreting the footage differently depending on my EI settings? DaVinci Resolve had rolled out an update and changed how it handles Sony footage. In this new version of DaVinci Resolve, it now uses exposure index metadata as the default exposure setting, not the ISO. It essentially bypasses whatever ISO value was set in camera and instead reads the EI value to determine how to interpret the footage. You can see this in the camera raw setting in DaVinci. It says Sony RAW, but I didn't shoot this in RAW. I only shoot in S-Log3, but Resolve now treat any Sony footage as RAW. And here's the key part, this happens by default, meaning your exposure in post is now driven by the EI you set on set, not the ISO setting. DaVinci gives us the ability to adjust the exposure level, and we can simply put it back to 800 and the image will go back to how it was shot. Now, I believe this is where things are headed for all the cameras and all the editing software. Red cameras already treat ISO as metadata, something that you fully control in post without locking it in during the shoot. And with Sony and DaVinci, that future is already here. I don't consciously think about EI on set just like I don't really overthink ISO. But the key difference now is that EI gives me the flexibility in post-production. And when I'm shooting in low light, I know that I can adjust my EI setting to get a cleaner image on my monitor. And if I decide later that I don't like the exposure level I choose, then I can simply type in a new EI value during grading. And that kind of control means I'm no longer locked into my in-camera exposure choices. And that's a big shift in how I approach any projects. Now, I hope this video helped clear things up. EI and ISO are not the same, but in modern workflow, EI is leading the charge. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment. Thanks again for watching and happy filming.